In this video, we're going to start talking about an irrational number that we have called e. Um, e is a constant just like pi. Um, and here's actually how it's defined. So what the exclamation point means, that's actually called a factorial. So what that means is, for example, if I have like five factorial, what it means is we take five times all the whole numbers before it. So times four, times three, times two, times one. Technically it is times zero as well, but as you know, multiplying anything by zero is zero. So we define zero factorial to equal one so that it doesn't make everything zero. So factorial again is just multiplying a number times every number before it and zero doesn't make everything zero when we do zero factorial. So by definition, zero factorial is one. So if I were to do these, so E, one over one, okay, one factorial is also one. Oh, sorry, this should be addition. Uh, two factorial is two times one, three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is um, 24, okay? And this pattern continues. So if I add all of these fractions up and they continue, we get it to be approximately, and you can check this on your calculator, we get it to be approximately 2.718. So just like pi we say is approximately 3.14, this is typically the approximation we use for E. Um, and E is something that's a constant that just exists naturally in our world. Um, we call, and because of that, we call it the natural number or it's called Euler's number it has to do with him being the person that discovered it. Um, so some other constants that we value very much in math, zero, one pi, I is another one. Um, and then E. Um, so there is this Euler's identity equation that he discovered and this relationship kind of incorporates all of those. This isn't something we expect you guys to know, but it's just kind of a fun fact that incorporates actually all of those constants um, and has a cool relationship between all of them. Okay, so where we're gonna be using E um, is we often use it in exponential equations. Um, so we'll see it as E to the X pretty frequently. Um, and so when we're solving exponential equations, remember we use inverses to do that. Um, so the inverse of an exponential is a log. So E has its own inverse and we call it the natural log. So log base 10, remember, was the common log. We use LN for the natural log and that is log base E. But this is what you guys will see on your calculator. Sorry, mine's, mine's a little bit rubbed off, but here's the natural log, just LOG, and then LN is the natural log, which is the inverse of E to the X. Okay, so we're gonna use that to solve some equations. Okay, so if I wanna get x by itself, I need to get rid of e. So to get rid of anything, we're gonna apply its inverse. So the inverse of e is natural log. And just like any algebra equation, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm taking, sorry, I should probably write that below so you guys can see. So I'm taking natural log of e to the x and natural log of five, okay? And remember, this is not natural log times five, it's natural log of five, it's its own function. So natural log and E are inverses, they're gonna cancel. So I have X equals natural log of five. This would be the exact answer. We can then also approximate it using our calculator, okay? And we can type in using that natural log button. Sorry, uh, blurry there for you guys. There we go. So natural log of five is approximately 1.609. So I'm gonna write that as well. So exact answer approximate answer. So depending on what you're asked to do, if you're asked to round to the nearest hundredth, south, thousandth, or if you're just asked to give it an exact form, this would be your exact form. Okay, so the other thing that might help is writing in exponential form. So remember the base always comes here and then the input and the output switch. So it's important to remember that natural log is always base E. So another way to write this is E switch. So this is the input and the output is one. So we're asking e to what power equals one? Well, anything to the zero power equals one. So x must be zero. You also could just type in natural log of one and see that it equals zero. Okay, this one, again, we're trying to get x by itself. So I need to get rid of e. So we're going to apply the natural log to both sides. So natural log of e 
is 1, so we're left with 1x equals natural log of 12. Again, this is the exact answer, the approximate answer using our calculator. Natural log of 12, 2.485. Okay, so there are my solutions. Okay, solution. Okay, simplifying. So again, natural log of E, those are inverses. Natural log of E is always one. Okay, and actually your calculator, you guys, most of you have E, so I'll show you that on here. So natural log E is, so pi is here in blue and E is here in blue. So to get it, I need to just hit second and then the division symbol. And I, you can always check that too, but natural log of E is one. So this simplifies to just one times this, okay? So I'm just left with 0.15t. Natural log and E will always cancel, okay? So that's what we're left with simplifying. This one I can't cancel right now. So even though it's E raised to the natural log, those are inverses and should cancel. This three is kind of in the way. So I'm gonna use my properties of natural logs and I'm going to pull my three up. Right now it's pulled out in front. Remember that is the exponent if I am condensing. So that I could rewrite as E raised to the natural log of x plus one to the third. Now I can cancel those. So this simplified would be x plus one to the third power. Okay, here, nothing in the way of natural log and e. Those just cancel, left with two x. Here, natural log of seven, natural log of x. Technically we consider simplified less terms. So combining like terms, you can kind of think of it like this. Well, when I add logs, remember that's the same as multiplying their arguments. So I'm gonna apply my condensed property of logs. So I can say this is natural log of seven X, right? Multiplying those two pieces. Remember, um, subtraction condenses to division. Always the first argument is the numerator. So it's gonna be natural log of two X over two. And that's within the parentheses, so I can actually simplify and just say that that is natural log of x. All right. Okay. We've talked about interests already with exponential functions. We have something called compound interest. Um, so you might hear uh, an interest rate of 3% compounded annually or compounded quarterly. And so that's just saying that your interest rate is... Um, being factored in more frequently. So instead of just once a year, it might be four times a year or whatever. So we're just gonna look at how this affects things. So this looks really similar to the equation we've used already, you guys. The only difference is we have this N involved, which is gonna be the number of times compounded, okay? So annually, N is just one. So that's gonna look really similar to what we did before. Um, but they might introduce things like this where our N will change. So let's try this here. So I'm going to use this example for all of these just to see how it affects the total amount of money. So we've invested $1 at 100% interest for one year compounded, and we're gonna look at these different ones. So I have N equals one. So we're gonna write out this formula. So my total amount, my principal, right? My initial amount I invest is a dollar. Um, then we have one plus my rate. So 100% is one as a percentage, or as a decimal, excuse me. And then annually, if I compound annually, n is one. And then for one year, so we have ones all across the board basically on this one. So I'm just gonna use my calculator here. So within those parentheses, I have one plus one is two, right? Two raised to the first times one. So this is $2. Okay, now let's see what happens when my interest compounds quarterly. So everything is the same except n is four. So we have one times one plus one fourth plus, or excuse me, raised to the four times one. So now if I do this, so one plus a fourth is 1.25, right? So I'm doing 1.2, I could just put this all in parentheses actually, you guys. Multiplying by one, that part's not really gonna change anything, but I could put it there if I want. So one plus one fourth, all raised to the four times one, which is four. Okay, so 2.44, so $2.44. So it kind of makes sense, right, that I'm making more money because it's compounding my interest more often in the year. So it kind of makes sense. So I would think that the more it's compounded, it's just gonna like explode. So let's see what happens. So we're gonna do 
Now, n is 12, so everything's the same except n is 12. Okay, so let's see if I can... Ah, oh, well, let me do that. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. So we got 1 plus 1 twelfth raised to the 12th, $2.61. So again, I increased n and my amount is going up. Maybe not quite as much as you think it might be. So let's see what happens when I compound daily. I would think this would be a pretty big jump. So again, everything stays the same. Okay, so we have one times plus one divided by 365, raised to the 365th, 2.71. Okay, and let's try one last one. So it's, it's going up, but it's kind of like not increasing at a crazy rate like you might think it is. So if I compounded hourly, so every hour, my interest compounded. Let's see what that does. It's almost identical, right? And if you recall, that 2.718 is actually our approximation for E. So it ends up leveling out, which is pretty interesting because if I were to do seconds, it's actually going to do exactly the same thing. So as n gets larger, it doesn't just increase like to an infinite amount. There's actually this point where I can't get any more than. And so that's pretty interesting. But as n gets larger, our total amount approaches e. So that constant that exists is again, kind of occurs in nature. As I increase N at this population or this money or this interest rate, it's not possible for me to just gain an infinite amount of money, um, no matter how much it's being compounded. So we have this formula, which is infinitely compounding something. So we thought secondly was a ton. This is infinitely compounding or continuously compounding is what we'll call it. But we're gonna use E because of that constant that we discovered as N got bigger. So this is called, for short, it's called the PERT formula for obvious reasons. It spells PERT, but the R and the T are being multiplied in the exponent. Um, this is for exponential growth models. Um, so like the interest model, we could use it for population, lots of things. Um, we can also use PERT for decay. The only difference is the rate will be negative. Okay, so let's do an example here. Um, a country has a population of 100,000 people and is increasing at a rate of 8% per year, compounded continuously. So as soon as you hear this piece, this is automatically the PERT formula, okay? What will the population be in 10 years? So that is the A. What's the new amount? So it's increasing, so R is going to be positive. So we're going to say A equals, P is still our principal amount, so initial population, times E, so the, actually our constant E, 2.718, times, or excuse me, raised to the rate. Remember, always want to put that as a decimal. So this would be 0 0.08. It's positive because we are increasing at that percent. And then 10 years. So my time is 10. And then you're just going to put this exactly into your calculator, you guys. So I'm going to use my E so that I'm not rounding. Okay. So I'm going to do 100,000 times E raised to the and really I should be doing E raised to this first, right? Order of operations exponent before multiplying by 100,000. So I'm gonna do E and then raise to the 0 0.08 times 10. All right, and there is our population estimate after 10 years. So write this down here. And it's population, so I'm talking about people, so I do wanna to round to the nearest whole number. So we'll round down, okay? So that's our population. If it were to continue at that 8% rate, compounded continuously for 10 years. Okay, um, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.